What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of EJ's Press. I'm your host, EJ, and today we're going to be rambling on about sympathetic villains. Now, sympathetic villains are a bit of a bugbear of mine. They are right up there with love triangles and plain but very attractive girls who are nothing to look at, but obviously the only center of attention for all the hunky boys in the room and will take down the government with nothing but the power of friendship and a pointed stick. Not a fan. So, let's talk about why. And it's not because I think there's no place for them. I think good villains have a little bit of sympathy to them. You know, Darth Vader was manipulated, according to you know, the, the new Star Wars movies, if you take stock in them. Um, he was he was redeemed at the end by Luke's faith in him. He was not the ultimate big bad. He was following the Emperor's orders. That's somewhat sympathetic. Um, if you look at Magneto, he's been treated horribly his whole life. He was a victim of the Holocaust. His entire family was wiped out by the Nazis, but he's still evil. And that's where I have a problem because one, we've got too many sympathetic villains. And if, if you look, um, every single villain in the MCU, with the exception of one, is sympathetic, and that one is um, blue guy from Guardians of the Galaxy, Ronan of the Kree. Um, and even he, if, if you look further into his backstory, becomes more sympathetic. But you know, if, you, if you look at superhero movies today, they're all sympathetic. Movies. They all have good reasons and understandable reasons for why they're doing what they're doing, and that's important. That is important to have in storytelling, but the problem becomes when we go past having sympathy for them, when it's no longer just a function of the villain being understandable, being more than just I'm evil because I'm evil, and I'll explain what I mean. Look at Loki in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In the movies, Tom Hiddleston's portrayal of the Norse god of trickery. Now, he's a character who definitely has um, some explanation for why he does what he does. He's not really a Norse god. Um, he's not really from Asgard. He's always played second fiddle to Thor. Um, and Odin has an interesting parenting style, to say the least. However, he still does bad things. He's still a villain. He betrays his family for no good reason. Um, it's not revealed that he's not as guardian until after he um, betrays his family the first time. He's a schemer. He likes to plot and manipulate people to get his way. He never just outright says what he wants. Um, and, and he's got a pattern of this because Heimdall calls, calls him out on it at the beginning of the movie uh, when he's kind of taking him to when, he, when he's taking Thor to the Frost Giant planet and Heimdall calls him out and says, that eh, you should not be leaving. And uh, Loki tries to explain something and, and Thor actually has to step in and, and talk his way through it because his, sil his silver tongue stops. So he's, he's a schemer. Um, later on, we see him in the Avengers kills 80 people in three days it's it's a line and and it's it's the, the well he's a, he's my brother he killed 80 people in three days and he's adopted you know funny scene establishes very strongly bad dude loki is not a good guy but by the time he dies and spoiler warning if you haven't seen infinity war loki dies at the end by the time he dies it's treated as a moment of tragedy and it's not because he's redeemed himself which is the problem I have with his kind of character. He was never given a redemption arc. He simply stopped being treated as a villain by the writers. It became no longer a function of, this guy does bad things. It's now, bad things happen to him, so him acting out is understandable. And this is a problem, because it excuses his villainy. It never redeems him for it. It never fully addresses it. It's not because um, it, it's he's, he's treated as a tragic death, not because he is worthy, but because...
because we've forgotten he was a villain. We have forgotten that he was um, killed 80 people. We've forgotten that he took over Asgard. There's a, there's a break from the second Thor, and, and by the way, I did appreciate the, the only part of the movie I felt any emotion was when we find out that Loki's alive, he's taken Odin's place on Asgard, that was my, oh crap, what's gonna happen next? And then we forget about him for four years. It turns out he's just been sitting there composing plays, doing nothing worthwhile at all, just for a comedy bit where we get to see Anthony Hopkins swear on, on live TV, and that's another thing. Why does everything have to be sweary now? I don't get it. Another video. Anyway. Uh, but he's never been terribly effective, but he still does bad things to try to achieve his goals. And that's just forgotten. We forget what a horrible person he was. We forget that he he has a body count in the billions, if you think about it, because he has left all the worlds under Asgard's protection. He's left them, just abandoned them. And Thor talks about that. Dead, a, a, a trail of dead planets in the wake of uh, the, the horned dude, Surtur, um, at the beginning of Ragnarok. That's Loki's fault, because Loki hasn't been doing his job. Never addressed, never redeemed or in any way compensated for. The closest we get is when he rescues the other Asgardians, but it's done with an air of, yeah, oh yeah, look at me, I'm pretty great. You had no idea how great I was, did you? So he never has that moment where the audience is reconciled. And that's just one example. It happens everywhere. Villains aren't just sympathetic. Villains aren't just understandable anymore. They're excused. Where you see him, you know, he's just a product of his upbringing. Kylo Ren in the new Star Wars is only on the dark side because Luke... <sighs> Something happened with Luke. Stupid thing. Kylo Ren is only on the dark side because someone else pushed him to it. Um, even even Anakin Skywalker is manipulated into being um, on the dark side because of love, not because he's seduced, not because he sees the power and says, "Yes, I want more of that." He says, "I must save Padme." Um, I guess, sure. You, you go, buddy. We can't just be bad anymore. Um, but look at the Grinch. Look at the, the, the new Grinch. DreamWorks Grinch movie that came out this past Christmas season was one of the most infuriating things for me to watch because it took the, for me at least, the original jack wagon of, of film. The Grinch himself, the meanest old crustiest old bad guy who was forgiven in spite of being bad and turned him into he just wants to get his groceries and who's won't leave him alone he's not the villain of the new Grinch and that's a problem because it was a villain story it was a story of how evil was forgiven not how evil's not really your fault and that's my problem one, it's over prevalent. Um, it's it's just getting tiresome. I'm getting villain fatigue, where villains are um, just excused, just forget that they're evil. You look at uh, comic books today: Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, um, Azrael. A lot of Batman villains, actually, come to think of it, because I, I, I suspect this is because they're all, um, in some way, mentally abnormal. Is that is that the word for it now? They're, they're all... Many of them suffer from some sort of mental illness or instability, and that's why they're bad according to modern writers and so it's not really their fault and so it's okay to have 
books about Harley Quinn adopting 80 dogs and 60 cats or whatever because, hey, you know, now that she's not working for the Joker in, in that Stockholm Syndrome thing, she's really not that bad of a person, never mind the fact that she kills people and doesn't pay the rent and is just all around a, a slob and a, a negative drain on society. Um, Poison Ivy gets similar treatment, I suspect largely because someone decided that she was in love with Harley Quinn and that means that she must not be bad because I don't know maybe maybe they've decided that heroes who used to be villains who still act villainously and don't show any signs of actually being a hero can't date villains mm -hmm. there's other reasons but who cares um you know what, those the, saying them would probably get my channel shut down two videos in, so we're not going to. Um, you look at Lex Luthor, who had an interesting arc because he was still Lex. He was still doing the things he did, he just did it with better publicity and he was smarter about not... He, he was able to put his grudge aside and that was interesting. That was a well done sympathetic villain. Magneto, well done sympathetic villain because he jumps at the chance to redeem himself, but he always remembers the the suffering he's experienced at humanity's hands. And he's, if, if humanity screws up, if humanity goes after mutants, it's like a switch has been flipped and he's right back on him the, the same way he's always been. So sympathetic villains can be done well uh redeemed villains anti-villains if you will can be done well they can be done very poorly and they're done too frequently is the real problem because doing them too frequently with this this sympathetic and anti-villain thing is causing them to overshadow the heroes now you might say well EJ, the most interesting part of Batman is his villains. He's just some kind of bat suit. Granted, you might find his villains more interesting, but or or you could say the same of Superman. You could say the same of you can say the same of Spider-Man. Spider-Man's villains are other than Ock and Darkwing pretty mediocre. Um, you could say the same of a lot of um, pop culture characters in general, Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. More people have Darth Vader branded stuff than Luke Skywalker branded stuff. Um, some villains just stick with us better than their heroes, and that's fine. That's fine. It's still with the understanding that look at how bad these guys are. Whereas now, with Loki, Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, uh, Kylo Ren, the Grinch, everybody is really not that bad, guys. You know, he, he killed 80 people in three days. Need I say more? He's a bad dude. But it's teaching, it's, it's, the problem with it is that it's so prevalent in young adult fiction, in comic books, in the kinds of things that are being given to children, being given to teenagers who don't have a great grasp on morality. And before you say, well, my kid's a perfect little angel, no. No, she is not. No, he is not. Kids, kids most frequently used word is no. They have to be repeatedly reminded what acceptable behavior is. They are not good people. We wouldn't need playground monitors if they were. So that means that we should be very careful about the kind of role models that we put in front of them. We should be very careful about what we're showing these kids and showing them anti-villains who are not necessarily redeemed or forgiven but are just treated by the writers as not that bad characters who do evil things hold evil positions act in an evil manner and are just excused with no effort from anyone to forgive no effort to redeem no effort anywhere aside from the writer deciding you know what I like Harley Quinn. I don't think she should be a villain. She's not a villain anymore, guys. She's a hero. She's just as good as Superman. That's terrible. That is teaching our children who are reading these, who will 
you know, who play Superman, who play Flash, who play Green Lantern on the playset, whatever. These, these kids who play Star Wars, these kids who look to these characters as inspirations in one way or another. I, I can't speak to many, you know, I, I can't speak to the six-year-old mind in today's day and age, whether they still look at, um, whether they look at Spider-Man and say, I want to be like him when I grow up. I want to be that kind of guy. Um, but when I was a kid, Spider-Man, absolutely. Cyclops of the X-Men, absolutely. Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, they were my heroes. Aragorn and Lord of the Rings, they were my heroes because they were presented as the ones worthy of attention. They were presented as the ones with noble acts who were the the positives, the big good of their, their respective works. And they were the ones you wanted to be because of not just what they could do, but who they were. And when all your villains suddenly start just not being villains anymore, when we suddenly start showing kids that you can do evil things and as long as, if you, as long as you can look somewhere in your past and say, well, but this happened to me, so really, what I did's not that bad. That's where you go wrong, because that's where you get a society of, of victims who can't take accountability for their actions. That's what it is. That's what anti-villains, that, that, that's what poorly done anti-villains are. They are characters who, because something bad happened to them, no longer hold accountability for their actions. And that is a dangerous, dangerous thing to show children. That is a dangerous thing to present as something worth paying attention to for a child because they will see that they will notice they don't have a great grasp on morality but they are observant they watch they look and see what we show them what we chose to present to them as an admirable trait that's why i hate that that's that's i shouldn't say i hate sympathetic films that's why i hate the overabundance and poor management of sympathetic villains in today's day and age. But that's just me. What do I know? I'm just rambling on.